We're going to be looking at the vibration of a beam. Here we have an electrodynamic exciter, which is driving this beam at this point in the middle. In reality, we've got two beams, one on the left and one on the right. This is so that the combined center of gravity is directly over the drive point. If I tried to mount just one beam on one side, the center of gravity would be over here somewhere. And when I drive it, the resulting torque could have given us motion that's not easy to see. So we're going to be driving up and down with a sine wave at the middle. We will see if we can find some resonances and we'll look for the mode shapes. So the beam is vibrating at 14 hertz. It's at its fundamental natural frequency. I have the strobe flashing at approximately 13 hertz, so we can see the beam moving at about 1 hertz. We can see the mode shape here. The mode shape is essentially zero displacement in the middle, zero slope. I'm now moving up to the second natural frequency. I'm driving the beam at 77 hertz, which is just below the second natural frequency. And if I slowly increase the frequency, we'll see the beam motion get larger and larger as it gets into resonance. Now we have some large motion resonance, and there we have the peak motion. There are some interesting things happening now. Right here, we can see a node, a point of no displacement. The beam here is moving up and down as a sine wave. The beam here is moving up and down as a sine wave. But at this point, we have no displacement. And we'll see that this part of the beam is out of phase with this point here. Let's look at this with the strobe light. We can see the node point is about here somewhere. And this part of the beam is out of phase with this part of the beam. The beam is still shaking just over 80 hertz at its second natural frequency. I've now moved the frequency of excitation up to 234 hertz. This is now the next natural frequency, the third natural frequency. If we look at the mode shape, we can see no motion here. At this point here, we've got large motion. We have a node here, no displacement, more displacement there, a second node at this point, and then motion at the end. And so, if we were to look at the phase, we'll see that at this point, the phase is 180 degrees from this point, and the phase is another 180 degrees back to this point. So the tip and this point will be in phase, while the middle will be out of phase. Here is the beam at its third natural frequency of 233 hertz. For a structure like this, a beam which is affixed at one point, we can decide which natural frequency it is by counting the number of nodes. In this case, we have two nodes, and that becomes the third natural frequency. That rule applies for any structure which is fixed. But if we have a free structure, we have a different rule. But essentially, the higher the frequency, the more nodes. I've now increased the frequency to the fourth natural frequency at 455 hertz. And it's difficult for us to see the beam moving. Let's look at a different way to find node lines. I'm going to put some salt onto the beam. As I turn the power back onto the shaker, we can expect to see the salt moving away from the points that are moving and settle where the node lines are. Now the node lines are very clearly displayed. This looks like the 16th natural frequency and I'm expecting to count 15 nodes. But now we're getting to such short wavelengths 
that we are starting to see a different shape forming here. Look, there is a little node running up the middle. We are actually starting to see this beam act more like a plate. We'll discuss how those nodes are revealed on a plate structure in another video.